Now, in 2023, Kenya made headlines with the launch of Taifa One, the country's first operational satellite. But beyond the excitement, what is really going on up there? Well, in tonight's episode of Unparked, we break down Kenya's bold mission in space, what Taifa One is doing above us, and why it matters down here on Earth. Take a look. of 2023, Kenya made history with the launch of Taifa 1. This X Falcon 9 rocket. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, engine's full power, and lift off of Transporter 7. Go Falcon, go Transporter. Naili happened after attempting three times and failing. And uh, this is almost everything you need to know about Taifa 1. So. Taifa 1 separation confirmed a state-of-the-art satellite developed by the Kenya Space Agency. But what's really going on up there and why should we care? Kenya will launch a nano-satellite into space. The country's first 3U Earth observation satellite, which has been christened Taifa 1. Kenya is now part of an elite group of African nations with satellite capabilities. Leaving smaller nations to play catch up, while South Africa, Nigeria, Algeria and Egypt are making big investments in space. Kenya's newly formed space agency has announced plans to start monitoring drought conditions from space. But this isn't just about tech pride. It's about positioning Kenya as a regional leader in space innovation. The Kenya Space Agency, we are mandated to promote to coordinate and to regulate space-related activities. Taifa One, Swahili for Nation One, is a 3U nanosatellite built in partnership with Bulgaria-based Endurosat and launched aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Taifa One is simply a selfie camera for a country taking pictures of Kenya from space in less than 10 minutes for every four days. The satellite is expected to orbit Earth for around three to five years before it burns while re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. But beyond the fanfare, what is this satellite actually doing up there? Taifa One serves multiple roles, but its most urgent mission is collecting vital data to improve life back on Earth. The satellite is made up of you know, sensors, so we have multi-spectral sensors, we have high optical um, payload sensors, and we also have thermal infrared sensors. So these sensors can help to measure the amount of moisture in the soil, can help in, uh, um, in you know, like uh, providing um, high quality pictures of the ground. And these are some of the ways that yeah, satellite can help us in, in terms of, you know, um, uh, solving or tackling issues such as deforestation, and climate change, applications in agriculture, weather monitoring, and GPS is also uh, one of the application of this satellite because it helps us to determine to determine our position. From monitoring climate change to tracking weather patterns, the satellite is feeding us crucial insights, the kind that can shape how we prepare for droughts, manage crops, and build climate resilience. It's also keeping an eye on Kenya's forests, tracking deforestation, spotting illegal logging, and helping in fighting poaching in protected areas. We can use the satellite data to be able to, you know, urban plan, in urban planning, to be able to restructure our city. And it's making waves in education too. The launch has energized Kenya's tech and science community, inspiring a new generation of engineers, scientists and innovators who now see space as something they can reach. Here at the Kenya Space Society, we hold amazing, fun and engaging space night trivia. The fact that uh, some of the Kenyans, Kenyan uh, engineers participated in the launching of the Taifa 1 satellite it actually motivates young generation and kids to know that, yeah, we can, if they build and they're Kenyans, we can also do it. So it's a motivation. It involves developing capabilities uh, on space systems engineering to be able to develop satellites. 
It involves developing capabilities on the launch to be able to actually launch those satellites. It, develop, it involves capabilities in actually operating those satellites when they're out in space or space operations, as well as now accessing data from, from those satellites in terms of downstream applications. So a whole range of upstream, midstream and downstream uh, applications. But it doesn't stop there. Kenya's space ambitions are attracting global attention with engineering firms, defense agencies and international satellite companies eyeing partnerships. Suddenly, Kenya is on the map in the global space race. Still, with great tech comes great responsibility. With a satellite capable of tracking everything from crop yields to human activity, there's growing concern about data privacy and transparency. Who controls the data? Who gets access? And how will it be used? The development of the very comprehensive Kenya Space Policy, we call it the Draft Kenya Space Policy 2025, as well as the, the Draft Kenya Space Bill 2025. Then there's the business side. This isn't just a science experiment. It's a potential gold mine. There's growing demand for satellite imagery and geospatial data from governments to insurance firms to agribusiness. By teaming up with private companies and international partners, Kenya is positioning itself to cash in and use that revenue to fund future missions. That we are doing collaboratively with countries in the region, uh, like countries in Egypt, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Sudan, in the development of a regional satellite. Again, that is intended to support their innovation. That means neighboring states or other African states can benefit from such data and information. That starts a new uh, space collaboration in this region uh, in terms of information and data sharing. And also it might see that in future we might have regional design satellites or African design satellites that will benefit uh, more countries. So it's very significant in terms of space advancement. Taifa 1 is just the beginning and with this satellite in the orbit, the sky is no longer the limit.